Hi guys, I'm the Endo Athlete and welcome to my very first YouTube video and my channel. I am so excited to be here. Starting a YouTube channel is something that I've wanted to do for a while, but I just didn't quite have the courage. I'm still getting all the jazz and gear and blah, blah, blah that you need to do this, so please bear with me. Before I dive into today's episode, which is going to be my top 10 beginner's tips to get into running, coming from a very beginner point of view, I thought I'd give you a little bit of an introduction about myself, what you can expect on my YouTube channel and why you should subscribe and follow along on the journey. So I am 26 years old. I am based in Sydney, Australia, and I am a full-time lawyer. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Shitty, I know. I'm sure many of you understand what I went through. It's very underdiagnosed. I went through years and years of debilitating pain before I finally got my diagnosis. I had two surgeries since I had my laparoscopy about almost a year ago and then about six months ago I had my bowel surgery. Fun times, fun times. Anyway, this year I wanted to challenge myself to be the healthiest version I could be, particularly after my hospital trip in February where I was there for five days after my bowel surgery and just really not having a good time. We're in a really good place now with the endometriosis. Um, unfortunately, it is still an ongoing problem. It is a chronic disease that will be around, I'm sure, for the rest of my life, but we crack on. That brings me to what you can expect from me and this channel. This channel is primarily going to be all things fitness and health and lifestyle from a very basic, chronically diseased, average human being. This is not another weight loss channel. This is not another before and after. I did lose a little bit of weight a while back, but you know, COVID hit and let's just say we, you know, yeah. I am not the skinny girl. I'm not the strongest girl. I'm pretty ordinary. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like we need someone like that, just the ordinary human beings going along their life who have a passion for fitness and a passion for healthy lifestyles and that's not their only part of their life. So here we are. So follow along, we'll do it together. I will be your best friend through the journey. Now, moving on to today's video. All right, so one of my challenges for this year was to get into running. Running is something I always hated. It's so embarrassing every cross country that came around in primary school, I was that little kind of chubby kid that hated running and I would get lapped and then I'd be embarrassed or I'd fake an injury or fake illness and I just I just hated it but something this year I don't know I think because I follow I follow quite a few people in my community who run and then I sort of started following influencers who into running and I just thought why the fuck not give it a go to hold myself accountable I signed up for a 5k run in July I have been running now for about eight weeks. Um, I have been following the Couch to 5k app and I actually tomorrow I'm gonna attempt my first 5k run. I know I'm petrified. I, I don't know how it's gonna go. If you follow along on my Instagram you will know that it has not been easy. I often post um, about how my runs go and pretty much all my stories I post how hard it was. So yeah look it'll be interesting. If you know what I will actually try and film a tiny bit. It's really hard to film and run, but I will try and film a little bit or even just a roundup to show you how all, how it went if I completed it. We'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Anyway, so when I wanted to start running, I was looking around, seeing what other people did, and yeah, I just thought, again, there's no one really... I mean, <laughs> there are, but there's not a lot of people I could find that were very new to the running journey. It was all the really experienced runners. And so I thought it'd be really fun and useful if I posted from a beginner's point of view, some top 10 running tips. Tip number one, get a good plan. As I said before, I'm doing the Couch to 5K plan. I'm sure there are many, many out there. In fact, I think they're all probably quite similar, but you just need to follow a plan to understand how it actually works. It's very misconceived and I know I was to say, when I had previously tried running in the past, I would go sprinting out the gate being like, <laughs> And I would get like two minutes in, couldn't breathe to save myself, die, and was like, fuck, running's not for me. But with a plan, I learned that's not what you do. That's not what you do at all. In fact, you have to go quite slowly. Anyway, get a good plan. It'll show you exactly what you need to do. And if you're like me, once it's written down, you go, okay, this is the plan. I need to stick to it. Tip number two, mindset. I think... One of the hardest things about running is not actually not actually the running itself. It's your mindset. Your mind likes to trick you and think that you can't do something. 
it likes to it honestly likes to carp it well before your body does so one thing you need to know going into running is that your mindset has to change and you have to really talk yourself up you have to be your biggest cheerleader because you will want to give up when you can physically go harder and longer your mindset needs to switch and tell yourself that you can do it i often hear like lucy davis being like i'm an animal in my head and that's what i try and say when i feel like i want to die have a good mindset tip number three getting good shoes now this is probably a very well spoken about tip because honestly it makes such a big difference but one thing i think people get tricked into doing slash get sucked into doing because if you're like me who's really easily influenced it could be easy to get sucked into buying the coolest new shoe or the one that your favorite influencer has and often that's not the shoe for you there are stores out there so in sydney i go to the athlete's foot that actually test how you walk and can tell you what sort of shoe is right for your foot that is exactly what you need I went in with the mindset because someone I was following on Instagram had said that the Brooks Adrenaline were amazing. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll go over and get some of them. And I was looking at the athlete's foot and I was like, excuse me, do you have any of the Brooks Adrenaline? And he was like, oh, well, what, what runners do you have currently? And I was like, oh, I'm actually new to running. I don't really know. I just saw that these were really good. And he was like, honey, get on the walking thing. Turns out I'm quite flat footed and the Brooks Adrenalines are not for me. I ended up getting the Brooks Ghost. Who knew? Make sure you go and get your feet checked to know which shoes are right for you because if you end up with the wrong ones, it can make running 10 times harder, it can lead to injury. It's just not the vibe. Despite how gorgeous some of those shoes you see on those fucking amazing fitness influencers that we watch, getting good shoes is really important. Getting the shoes that are right for you is really important. Tip number four, go to the loo before you go on a run. This was something no one told me. No one mentioned it. None of my fitness influencers mentioned it. Going to the toilet to do your number poos do your number two is really important. There's this thing called runner's gut that I've never heard of before. Yeah, yeah, that can catch you by surprise. Make sure you go to the toilet before you head out on a run. Fun tip. Tip number five. It is okay to walk when you start to run. Let me tell you, you put on your running shoes. I don't care what they say. You are a runner. It doesn't matter if you have to walk. Walking is good. It is hard to start running. It is so, so hard to start running. Walking will be your best friend. Couch to 5K, I think for the first like five weeks, all my runs had walks in them. Even longer, maybe my first six weeks, all my runs had walks in them. No one expects you to be able to just run a fucking 10K off the mark without walking. Walking is good. Don't be afraid to walk. Tip number six, dress appropriately. Now I know how unflattering certain shorts can look on people. I am me. I have thick thighs. Don't run in short shorts, because let me tell you, you're gonna chafe. If you're like me and you've got bigger thighs, you're gonna chafe. You need to dress well to run well. And by that, I mean, don't go for that aesthetic look. Like no one gives a shit what you look like while you're running. No one cares. But if you're wearing tiny short shorts, not the right bra, no hat, and it's a sunny day, your thighs are chafing and you're getting sunburned and you, it can all go wrong. That brings me to my next tip. Don't compare yourself. Everyone is so different and it is really easy even when you begin to compare yourself how fast you're going, how, how far you can run and it can absolutely throw you. To this day, I swear to God, everyone I follow, I, I would say I'm the slowest. Yep, I'm 100% the slowest and that's fine. You know why? Because it's my race I'm running. I'm not doing it for anyone else, I'm doing it for myself. Just don't compare yourself. My next tip is seek out inspiration. Now, I know this goes against everything that everyone says, you know, it's not motivation, it's just been blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we get it, 100%. That's, that's 100% correct. But when you follow someone that goes out running and you go, shit, they look fucking cool. Like, it can make you wanna go for a run. I even started running because I was following influencers who are running. Seek out people that you like to follow and who will make you want to go for a run. I love personally Lucy Davis, uh, Matthew Foodie Fitness, uh, Lucy X Fit, all my, all my running influencers are named Lucy. Actually a lot of in fitness influencers are Lucy. Oh, another one that I love, Lucy, I think it's Lucy Shaw Vlogs. She is a, she'll talk from a beginner's point of view as well. She's no longer a beginner, but she has been there and she's very open with that and she's great to follow. Find some people you love, 
look at them do it and it, it can really inspire you. I can't count. I don't know what tip we're up to. I think we're up to maybe number nine. My next tip is make sure that you recover properly. That means stretching, that means getting enough sleep, and that means taking some breaks between your runs. Going with the correct mindset of I'm going to start running, that doesn't mean it has to be every day. I run three times a week. I make sure there's always a break in between my runs where I have a day of either gym or rest. And let me tell you, it makes a world of difference. I also see a physio, I stretch. Um, when you first start running, a few niggles might come up. In particular for me, I've struggled with my knees. It's just an adaption process. You know, your body's getting used to it. So that's why recovery is really, really important. So make sure you stretch, see a physio if you need to, eat, sleep, all the good things. The last and biggest tip is you can do it. I know that it's not for everyone. I know that people don't particularly want to, I know that people won't enjoy it. But if you've ever had that thought cross your mind where you think, I want to try running, I want to be a runner, trust me, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, guys, I'm going to now cut to my run before I wrap up the video and you can see how the 5K went or didn't go. Good morning, guys. Happy Sunday. It is now time to do my first 5K run. I'm feeling confident. I'm just going to take it really, really slowly and we're just going to, we're going to get it done. One little snag that has come up is it is now raining in Sydney. Um, and I don't really want to do my first 5k outdoors in the rain. I was planning to go to an oval to do it while it's raining. Obviously it's going to be muddy. It's going to be gross. It's just not ideal. Now, the reason I can't do this slash I don't want to do this just outside normally, and you'll hear me whinge about this constantly, is that Sydney is really fucking hilly, particularly in the area that I live. Like you can't, there's no flat routes. Like it's very like, not just like, da -da 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 -da. it's very like, <sighs> it's just, it's not ideal. So I have been doing a lot of my running on the treadmill. I am trying to do some outdoor running to get used to it. Last week and I did an outdoor run, I couldn't finish it. And I got really hard on myself and really disappointed. But you know what? It's, I'm a beginner and shit happens and not everyone's going to be amazing. And yeah, it's, it's part of the journey. Anyway, so I'm here now. I'm at my gym. I'm going to go and do my first 5k run on a treadmill. Wish me luck, I will, I don't think I'll be able to film too much um, because obviously I'll be on a treadmill inside, um, but I will check in sort of, um, at least when I'm on my cool down. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> guys my first 5k done and dusted i'm not gonna lie it was I, I mean i'd love to sit here and say i just smashed out 5ks it was great it was easy it wasn't that's the reality of being a first time runner this was my first 5k it's the longest and furthest i've run time wise and obviously length so first of all i started off pretty strong i was focusing on going really really slowly because i was like oh i just gotta keep the heart rate down as far as long as possible which is something that I think most beginners will struggle with me in particular my heart rate is just fucking through the roof within like five minutes anyways and then about god am i actually dying at 14 15 minutes in so about two k's a bit over two k's in for me i was like oh i need to go to the toilet i paused my watch i had to stop the treadmill pause my watch i might add as well so not only runner's gut but because i had bowel surgery i've also got this thing at the moment called anterior Reese resection syndrome i think it's called so it means that basically my bowel is sort of relearning how to function with its new shape i know it's disgusting well it's not it's anatomy but yeah and so i had to go to go to the loo it was really quick with that that was fine um jumped back on got the treadmill up and going again and when it was running i restarted my watch and then oh i was so done by like 3.5 k's i was like this is i don't think i'm gonna do it i was like no come on it's all your mindset like you're like you're just being a little bitch essentially come on you can do it kept going i kept going and then around the 4k mark my heart rate i could just feel myself like almost hyperventilating it's not good so i did uh slow down and walk for about two minutes 
and then I was so angry at myself but I knew it was kind of necessary yeah it wasn't ideal so walked for about two minutes just to get the heart rate a bit lower and then kicked off again and yeah did the got to the 5k's I'll put my stats up on the screen here and I'll also put my whoop um, up here but yeah I think I did it in roughly just over 40 minutes which is incredibly so but I'm so proud and it felt very difficult for me yeah well I might try and do another 5k next week I think might tone it down and just try and yeah I don't know I don't know what to do um, I do have some some plans coming up in September my plan for that I'm swapping over to the runner app and my plan for that technically starts at the end of June so I think yeah still need to figure out what I'm gonna do for the next few weeks that's best gonna help me with my endurance um thank you guys so much for watching my first video I hope um, you took something from it I hope you liked it and most importantly I hope you see some benefit in following me on my journey and our journey and we can go through it all together thanks guys just getting ready